over 15,000 professionals in 10 years. Embrace Hitmat's numerous professional programs from HND to BTEC, BSc, and MBA in the schools of business and management sciences, engineering and technology, and the school of transport and logistics. Embrace Hitmat's professionalism, excellence, and consistency with solid mentorship from the University of Bamenda and the University of Boya. Embrace Hitmat's skills, development, expertise, and career orientation via workshops and academic field trips. Be part of the Hitmat family. Visit our Boya campus at Checkpoint Moliko and Duala campus at Karufu Yoro. Joss Bonamusadu. Contact 683-70-1720. The Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, the University Institute for Professionals. Good evening, uh, televiewers. You welcome to this other edition of Prime uh, on My Media Prime. This day, we are going to be revisiting a, an interview that was granted uh, the Median newspaper by Senator Mila Moki uh, Charles, former mayor of uh, Boya uh, Council. We are going to be looking at what he said in that interview. Uh, raising uh, the points that uh, evidently there is no leadership in uh, the southwest and northwest uh, region in Cameroon, uh, asking why there is so much uh, witch hunting, blackmailing, and uh, infighting about, among uh, those who are given the chance to lead uh, the, the people. We are going to be discussing this with our panelists who already are in the house with us. Um, our consultant is here, uh, Apostle Ambe Valentengua. He's in the house with us. Uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening, Mr. Dio. My co panelists. Good evening, Cameroonians and viewers of Prime Hour. This is another day again to discuss heart burning issues that concerns our nation, Cameroon. We have been in a period of total crisis, and I'm very, very sure what we contribute to every day is, help, <coughs> is helping the situation in the country. Thank you for the privilege to be here. Okay, we also are uh, in the company of Professor Mark Antony, who is a Pan Africanist. Uh, today is his birthday. I use this opportunity on behalf of members of uh, our forum, that's Prime R, uh, to wish him happy birthday to you. Good evening, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Leo, and uh, to the entire house, Prime R, and uh, to all those out there who wish me happy birthday today. It is indeed a great day, and uh, I believe that. Whatever we'll be saying here will be constructive enough to, as a means of celebrating my birthday, I should put it that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, while you watch, I think it is necessary not just to be a critic, but to be out to learn. Okay, we also are in the company of uh, Dr. Success and Kungo, who is going to be participating uh, live from Nigeria. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, House, and good evening, Cameroonians. We will thank you for inviting me to this great program today. And I truly believe that uh, at the end of this discussion, we shall be able to provide answers to certain questions okay. that concerns our nation. Okay. I appreciate uh, you for this opportunity. Just to say that uh, Dr. Sosses Nkomo is uh, hails from a Yumojok subdivision in Manu Division, southwest region of Cameroon. He is a theologian, political scientist, an entrepreneur, human rights activist, motivational speaker, philanthropist, a peace broker, a private investigator. He is a husband and father of uh, five. Many persons have been asking to know more about him. Uh, that is why I took time off to be able to get through this. But we are also expecting the arrival into our studios and on this panel of Andrin Atemibaku. He is caught in traffic. He's going, uh, definitely going to be joining us. I'll start with you, Apostle Ambi Valentine Goa. Um, consistently, um, Senator Mbila Mokichas has been raising some key issues uh, at a time when many others have played Seat lips. Yes, uh, without mincing words, uh, Senator Mbila Mokichas has been one of the most vocal English speaking senators. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, Senator Henry Kamende also who have been outspoken addressing the issues that concerns <coughs> our country, Cameroon. We must applaud their gathered gesture of theirs and uh, appreciate them for being a voice to the voiceless. 
uh, what he said that there is a um, lack of um, evident lack of leadership in the north and south is a very clear statement mm -hmm. you see there is a difference between leadership and leaders Northwest and Southwest have a bunch of leaders who do not know the art of leadership. Leadership is a capacity to maximize opportunities. And once you are given that headship, it's an opportunity for you to display the leadership potential you carry. A leader is practically known most of times in crisis. A, we have a nation that has been rocked by the Anglophone crisis for the past four years, and we have Anglophone leaders in the persons of parliamentarians and senators and elites and other top-notch in the government of Cameroon who are supposed to have come together to make sure that they drive a particular motion to put an end to this crisis. But so disappointing is the fact that we have all these personalities in question who are mute. They practically say nothing. And now, how do you explain that a cube of sugar is dropped in a basin of water? The taste cannot come out. It is shouting alone like John the Baptist crying in the wilderness. And then the rest are not there to help and ginger his efforts. I think that uh, it's like somebody trying to cut the burden of the community by himself. My father used to tell me that if you cook food for the community, they will eat and ask for more. If the community cooks for you, you will not be able to finish it. The community is the community is the combination of all the leaders of the English-speaking extract. And we are calling on all of them, from minister delegates to ministers to prime ministers to um, senators and parliamentarians to put themselves together and make sure that this drama or melodrama comes to an end. One of the things that has actually punctured the leadership of the North and Southwest elites, there is a divide amongst us. And this Machiavella system <clears throat> uh, introduced by the government against the leadership of North and Southwest has actually affected the leadership activities in the North and the South. So without gainsaying, Pitinutum Belamukichas has actually struck the camel on the back. And I'm very, very convinced that if we don't look into this particular statement that he has made, we will just be jumping and going up and down. I'm very, very convinced that behind this particular statement, if we are able to diagnose it properly and come with a practical solution, then there is all evidence that tomorrow we can have a solution to the problem because if at all those who came from the north and the southwest were actually in collaboration with one another then probably would not have been where we are today as far as the crisis is concerned there's a lot of divide there's a lot of camps a lot of separation i mean you go even within the southwest elites there is a breakup among them you go in the north 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 northwest elite there's a breakup among them and if they don't come together in a united front, they cannot offer a practical solution to what this nation is going through. So they should not go in the annals of history in this country that during their tenure in leadership, they were a disgrace to their communities, their constituencies, and to their people. That is my take and my very first take for today. Okay. Uh, Professor Mark Anthony, um, lots of uh, division raised there uh, amongst uh, the uh, the leadership uh, in these two regions is could that account for uh, what uh, Senator Mbela Muki Charles is saying uh, that there is a clear lack of leadership? Leo, division, the division that uh, we are talking about now is not something that started today. Mm -hmm. It is what actually gave birth to the nation Cameroon. This division at existed before we even actually uh, joined La Republic du Cameroon to form what we call today Cameroon, La Republic du Cameroon. And you know, it has, it was a strategy from the very beginning to create that division among the two factors, factions of uh, the Anglophones, those that are coming from the Northwest and those that are coming from the Southwest, that division was created. And as time progressed, there was further breaking down where those between those from the Northwest were pitted against themselves. And so it became a fight, and those from the Southwest were pitted against themselves. And so it became a, an internal fight where Anglophones were on the throat of each other struggling to actually kill one another so it is not something that started today it has been for a very long period of time if you go back history you realize that before foncha actually won 
1961 plebiscite, it was because he used that strategy of north-west-south-west divide. It is something that came from far, which was one of the strategies he thought he could use to downplay the leadership of the then uh, 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 MBLA. But you see, when we sow seeds, we must live to reap them. Those were seeds that were sown in the past, which have actually grown to become trees, which have born great, in fact, seeds and for, a whole forest has come out of it. And so it becomes practically difficult for these people, the people of the Northwest, the Southwest, I mean, if we, even within Northwest, there is division. Even within Southwest, there is division. And so who is going to step out to take that particular helm as a leader? It becomes difficult because anytime anybody wants to emerge, the target is to destroy such a person. Mm. And that has been the reason why we have been finding it difficult to identify any individual who could stand for us among our own people. Mm. Even though we have leaders, like Apostle Ambe actually indicated, we have a lot of leaders, but we lack leading leaders. Because that is what I was saying. We lack individuals who have the capability to lead in a time when we need them the most. Why? We are against one another. Of course. Practically against one another. So, you do not expect that uh, somebody should rise. For example, you just if you listen to the, 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 some of the interventions of uh, Bela Mokichas, you realize that he is pointing an issue which is very, very powerful. Okay. And as long as I'm concerned, I want to buy with him because let me say this to you. The Northwest, the Southwest have a lot of elites, politicians involved, whom we could call them leaders in quotes. Mm. But amongst them, okay. we do not have individuals who are willing to okay. take their next to in order to fight for the people. Okay, before we get to uh, Dr. Success in Kumu, let's take a listen to uh, Senator Mbila Mokicha's. Uh, filing in from Yaoundé. Yes, Leonard. Let me revisit one of the highlights of that interview that I granted the media newspaper. It is evident that We, as English-speaking Cameroonians, have had the privilege of being occupants of the Prime Minister's office for quite some time. Unfortunately, my reaction is coming at a time we are burying a former Prime Minister, and I would like to extend my sincere condolences to the Berry family and um, recount with great affection and admiration the services that the late Prime Minister Achide Achu um, rendered to this beloved country of us as a faithful servant of the state. Leonard, today, Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute is the occupant of the Star Building. I can tell you with authority that he has not received the necessary collaboration, support, and protection he deserves from his brothers and sisters of the Northwest and Southwest regions, who are kind of associated with privileged positions, I mean privileged positions in the state structure. Leonard, let me be frank here. 
I've never seen a time when people gang up in a way as they are doing today. Threaten the stay of the Prime Minister at the Star Building. People engage in blackmail, backstabbing, witch hunting. They pay for publications that are all intended to smear the image of the Prime Minister and Evidently, we draw against his person and his office. We are not going to stand idling by and see a great son of the English-speaking community of this country who has shown such good faith, level-headedness, commitment and dedication to the state and of course, a proven technocrat in this country will elect to render service and the quest for power and scheming from people in high places will take center stage in derailing him from the focus he came with in the star building. That has to stop. Let us show love for this country and have respect for one another. Lena, there is an ongoing campaign of personal destruction on the Prime Minister linked to unfounded and fabricated allegations against his person and his collaborators. I can tell you that much of it is more than meets the eye. We have to be very careful. The Prime Minister Head of Government is an authority and the personality was a track record for diligence, dedication and commitment to work. He has served this country with abnegation. Those who know him will never associate him to what allegations and fabrications are mounted through publications. to smear this image and damage the beautiful character he has constructed for, for himself over time. It has to stop. If we love this country, we should believe in its institutions. Okay, well, that was Nito Mbila Mukichas there. He's saying that there's evident a lack of leadership in the Northwest and Southwest region. But he came uh, forcefully to say that uh, um, the Prime Minister needs uh, support more than ever before, uh, raising other issues that um, there is a campaign, a cabal that is against him. Uh, Dr. Success and Kumu, uh, do you see things uh, from the same prism as uh, Senator Mbela Mukichars, especially with respect to uh, the Prime Minister? 
Yes, I, I have uh, the same opinion with uh, Senator Mbela Mokichas, and I thank God for using him to, to, to champion this cause at this point in time. First, I want you to understand, Mr. Liu, that no matter how powerful a people are, if they are divided, they shall be defeated. And no matter how weak the people are, if they are united, they shall be victorious. You see, one of the reasons there is division among our leaders, though they are not leaders that were chosen by the people, they are leaders that were imposed to the people. But let me leave that for now. One of the reasons there is no unity and coordination among our leaders is because there is no unity of purpose. There is no unity of purpose. And there's no unity of purpose among our leaders because there is no purity of purpose. There is no purity of purpose because of conflict of interest everyone is in position of leadership for themselves leadership is not a title it's a duty it's an assignment any leader who occupies the seat of leadership and is there for himself that leader is not fit to lead one of the greatest qualities of a good leader is that they are ready and willing to lay down their lives for their people and this is the direct opposite of what we have in northwest and southwest our leaders are busily protecting their own lives at the detriment of the lives of their subjects recently bishop archbishop in care raised a point at the barrier of Senator Mukete in Kumba. He said that any leader, any politician who stays away from their constituent, they stay away from their constituency and they are protecting themselves and eating money at the detriment of those they were elected to protect. Those leaders are scammers. And I heard some people were grumbling. He never had called the name of anybody. It is clear for us to understand that leadership is not a, is not chocolate. Leadership is a call for sacrifice. Anyone who cannot die to convenience and comfort cannot be a leader. Anyone who cannot sacrifice his own personal interest for the benefit of his people cannot be a leader. Anyone who cannot lay down his life for his people cannot be a leader. So the leaders we have today are leaders who were either recommended by a certain godfather or leaders who lobbied their way into position of leadership. They are not leaders that were elected by the people. When a people elect their leader, it means they have seen in them something that they need. When a people decide to elect their leader, it means that they have noticed that this leader can sacrifice their life for them. Now, let me take an example. I'm not making publicity for him. Let's take a perfect example for Honorable Ngala Gerard of um, uh, Honorable Ngala Gerard, you can see by yourself that this man was is the choice of the people, that nobody imposed him in that position. But there are many males, there are many parliamentarians that were forced into office by their godfathers. The people did not elect them. 
So they are there to either satisfy their own personal interest or the interest of the godfathers who facilitated their way into that office. That is one of the things we are suffering today. No wonder they are abusively protecting their own interest. That's why they cannot come together to defend the common interests of the people of Southwest and Northwest. They are there for themselves. They are not there for the people. They are there for their godfathers. They are not there for the people. So there is conflict of interest. It's the same thing to a marriage relationship. Most of the marriage relationship is simply because the husband wants his own interest to prevail, the wife wants her own interest to prevail. And because there is conflict of interest, they'll be fighting and it will eventually resort to divorce. So if we must have good leaders, good leadership, they must first agree to pro protect the common interest of the people of Northwest and Southwest. If that cannot be done, then there is no way we can ever have good leadership because, because everyone is there for himself and no one is there for the people. The people are bleeding. They are weeping and groaning in pains every day. Why their the so-called leaders are a, a lavish money in Yaounde Duwala all over the place. And there are people who they are supposed to protect are dying of hunger every day. So we need true leaders. I want to appreciate the person of Senator Bella Moki. This man, I knew him when he was a mayor in Boya. There was a crisis then. This man resolved those crises without any classes. In those days, he was a man. No wonder God is lifting him higher and higher. Any leader, I repeat, who cannot sacrifice his personal convenience for the people he is leading, that leader is not qualified to be a leader. That is why you know, this crisis has lasted for four years plus today. Who among those so called leaders have done any reasonable work to end the crisis? They cannot. They don't have a voice among the people because when they speak, the people don't listen. Why don't the people listen? Because they are not the choices of the people. No matter the music they sing, they only go down to their hometowns during campaign period. They only go down to their hometown to deceive people and give campaign promises. But the people don't know them. The Bible says, I know my sheep. My sheep know me. They know my voice and they follow follow me. How many of the people in your hometown do follow you? How many of them can listen to you? How many of them can you talk to them and they say yes sir, we have heard and we will comply? None. That is why they have not even succeeded to convince the voices in the bushes, let me put it that way, to drop down their guns because those voices don't even recognize them. They don't recognize them at all as their leaders. They have been imposed to the people as leaders. So we need legitimate leaders that have been chosen by the people. And if a leader is chosen by the people, then you will know that this leader is the voice of the people. He speaks the mind of the people. He protects the interests of the people. He can lay down his life for the people. That is the kind of leadership we are looking for. Charles, <laughs> sorry, we are talking about uh, the outing of Senator Mbila Muki Charles, who is talking about um, an evident uh, lack of leadership in the Northwest and Southwest uh, regions. Um, are the, those, we are talking about the elite here, uh, political and other uh, leaders, um, are they caught between um, two difficult uh, situations where you tend to government, you may receive a sledgehammer, you turn this other way, and you are considered a black leg, are they themselves caught in a web, the leadership in the Southwest and Northwest region? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Liu, it is quite obvious that they are, they are stuck or they are tied in between two forces, and they find themselves in a very vulnerable situation whereby they are forced to, to declare or to, to speak 
their minds so that people should be able to assume their position or the position which they have taken in the midst of this uh, this conflict or this crisis you see but when you we talk about the uh, leadership or leaders you it all depends on the context if we were coming from russia or we're coming from china or from syria and then we're going to possess a country which is called our own then we can say we have leaders that either were being divinely appointed by some other divine power to lead the people into a different land but here we are talking of uh, Cameroonians who are in Cameroon and I think that uh, the, the kind of people that we should have been talking of or describing as leaders should have been the people who have agreed to succumb and to comply with the demands of the society that is the people who represent that either the regions or that country or the society the people got demands and those it is on the basis of those demands whereby they now decide to choose someone who is going to take up the responsibility to make sure that those demands are being made and that is a kind of a, a, how will i put the context in which i would describe a, a, a how will i put it a, a leader in this uh, in this uh, instance to be but when you look at uh, in the case where the masses that we are talking to who are the people going through the the current condition and the crisis the people the most affected people are not the ones who really have i would say that these individuals pass through the doors of these masses they did not pass through the doors of these masses as a matter of fact they just appeared and the the it is almost like a surprise to the people because this is not the wish and the desire of the people so it becomes very challenging mr liu when we look at the individuals who who felt that i mean the politics in the in the context of uh, what we are seeing today in most uh, african countries as cameroon that we are talking of is very challenging because when you are a good man and you have a good will political will for your people and you find yourself in this kind of setup if for example god had given you 60 years to live if you try doing your best to do the best for your people you will live that 60 years and die and go but when you want to compromise at the detriment of your people you can live even 90 the devil will add you 30 more years to increase evil in your society and this is what we are seeing today in our in in in, in our government so the the, the the aspect of change here mr Liu, i think that um, bilamoki is speaking at this point not really as a politician but as a, as a patriot, someone who seeks for solidarity amongst his people and is calling for unity because right now at the point in which they are standing, it is clear that if they don't get the support from the masses, it is like a death sentence. Where they are is a matter of life and death. And the only time you can escape the position in which you are is only when you get collaboration, cooperation, solidarity with the masses that you seem to be hanging on the air and you don't have connection with these people so it is a connection that Belamoki is seeming to cry out that this connection between him and the masses are not there it's not found and these are the things that we are saying that at the end of the day you come to realize that it is not really a, a challenge or a problem at the level of leadership it also comes at the level of the masses because the masses to have refused due to certain other conditions to seek cooperation with the, with the so-called leaders who are trying their best to make sure that they meet the demands of the society because you come to realize that mr Liu, i would understand at one point why we may have criticized the decentralization to say that it is not effective but it cannot be effective by the government doing making it effective it can be effective if the population the masses decides to come together and make and give the support to the people who are the actors who are in place and the people who are desire, who desire change in those two regions I believe that they will be able to get the honor, they will be able to get the dignity, the sovereignty, and the power to affect the kind of changes they want in their society. We cannot expect where there is no way to survive, and the only way is for you to cry out help on the shores. The people who are hanging on the change which we still cry out will not only come from the government. At this junction, I still say, can only come from the masses. It will take the masses in those two regions to unite themselves and understand that if really they are the one going through the problem, feeling the pains, the question is, can they unite? If they can, then the solution is in their hand. Okay. Let them unite and support their leaders. Okay. Uh, are we also saying this, uh, Apostle Lambi Valentin Gua, because of um, the, the capacity or the seemingly weak uh, nature of uh, Noefo I'm talking about at the Northwest Front, uh, uh, 
Kenyon and uh, that of uh, the Southwest uh, Chiefs Conference. Can we also say that because they are not all powerful, they are not uh, uh, having that capacity to move things as given rise or birth to what uh, Senator um, Bela Mukicha is saying today? Uh, Nowhere 4, and, uh, which is Northwest Funds Union and the Southwest Chiefs Conference, were supposed to be very powerful bodies in this country. Mm. When tradition, customs, monarchy is politicized, even the monarchs lose their integrity and their relevance in the society. Mm. Our forms were supposed to be the people at the base. Our chiefs were supposed to be at the part of the base. We were supposed to be the voice of the people. As a matter of fact, politicians were supposed to be running there to forms. Senators were supposed to be running to forms to talk to the people. But we have a very, very bad situation whereby even the forms are not to be listened to because they have lost their credibility. They have lost their integrity. They have lost their rank as funds in the society because they have politicized a very sacred office that was designed by nature and by custom to preserve and protect the interests of the people. In most occasions, when British came to Cameroon, they use the indirect rule, which means the phone was an intermediary between the state and the masses. Such powers given to the phones came to the extent whereby it, were, it was the phones that called the shots. In this time of crisis in Northwest and Southwest, the chiefs were supposed to be the one when they stand inside the community and hit their hand, the children will come out. Because the chiefs and the phones were supposed to be standing on a neutral ground. But the phones and the chief have entered into politics even more than the politicians. To the extent whereby the people already see them as strangers in their community. They have desecrated the monarchical office of the phones and chiefs. Phones are arrested. Phones are kidnapped. Something that is unheard of from the cultural and traditional background of these two communities where people of such nature were held in high esteem, heavily respected. Because why? Funds have become parliamentarians, funds have become senators, funds have become municipal councillors, some funds have become regional councillors, thereby making them take sight already. If they were neutral, they were arrested. In the days of Obafemi Awolowo in Nigeria, he was a ruler in Yoruba land. When Obafemi Awolowo hits his hand on the ground, what the president said doesn't matter. And those were the kind of authorities our phones had in those days, where phones had the capacity to tell people not to go out. If the president said they should go out, they will not go out. But what kind of phones do we have today? Can you tell me that the royalty that was in the great kingdoms of the Northwest and the Southwest were involved into petty, minor, politics that has desecrated the office of the funds and the chiefs no how do you explain that funds can no longer stay in their communities funds who are supposed to be the voice of the people funds and chiefs who are supposed to be the one that will tell the president that if you have to get to these children you have to get to me so you realize that because we have politicized the sacred office of funds and chiefs they have lost their potential are not even in the communities anymore to talk to the children. Why? Because offices of funds that were kept to be sacred, consecrated, and kept for the security of the people have turned into politics. And that is why we have a challenge today that there is no bridge. There is no bridge. The parliamentarians and the senators on their part who were supposed to equally be a bridge between the state and the non-armed groups. The non-state groups were supposed to be the bridge, but they also have gone to the excess of abusing the office of the uh, 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 political officer that were given to them by taking sight. This is where we have a problem today. They used to say it takes a bridge to link two communities and it takes a wall to separate two communities. I can guarantee you bad leadership in the northwest and the southwest has broken down all the bridges that were supposed to have been used to link the states and the masses, mm. forms, chiefs, parliamentarians, senators, build bridges and stop erecting walls to okay. separate the society. Okay. Um, can we 
today say that uh, we lack these emblematic uh, figures in uh, these uh, regions, people who can easily rally people around? Professor Mark Antony? I think it's not a question, it's a confirmation of what is on the ground because we do not have such persons at the moment as we are talking. You know, it is funny how not long ago we all watch how one of the respectful kings of the Northwest region was practically arrested, molested by his own, uh, uh, let me use the word indigenous. We are talking of uh, the fun of fun Binglo of Banso. You might not want to believe, but sure they were in it because they could not have gotten detailed information about him when there was nobody from inside the house. And when you look also, it's not long ago we have seen how young people beat, killed even chiefs in the southwest region. The question is what led to this position? What has happened that the fear that the people used to have for their kings has disappeared? What has happened that that respect is no more there? What has happened that today we are talking about emblems that are lacking? It is because something has happened. That which held everything together has eroded. And until we go back to start building integrity, which is the center of leadership, which is the heart of leadership, certainly we will never be able to have this kind of coherence and we will not have the ability to bring people together. On every side, there is need for that particular integrity. Let me use that word again. To be built, we need to build it in one within one another. We need to work to actually link those bridges which we destroyed. You see, I sat one day and I heard how funds were threatened and they were even told by their own people if they step their legs in their villages, they will be killed. I asked the question what happened? Before when the phone is passing, you see people will bow. But something has happened. I don't want to call it civilization because that to me is destruction. I don't want to call it light that has shone. I will say darkness has fallen upon the people. And so Mr. Leo, on practical basis, we do not have emblems which we could look up to again in Cameroon. The political elites that we do have, whom before people could believe in and love, have now become the figure of mistrust, where nobody believes a word that comes out of their mouth, because they practically have sold their people for their bellies. Most of them prefer to build their big houses, most of them prefer to have their big cars, than to take care of the dying people of their various regions and that is one of the reasons why you do not expect that any of them should speak and anybody should listen to them they are far up there and the people are down there they are individuals who have been handpicked and raised why they were supposed to be there for their own people they have forgotten that they were called into that particular office to serve, not to actually just feed fat. And that has become the subject of the day. When somebody is appointed into an office, there is celebration in the family. We all know of this proverb that say, when your brother is sitting on the black plum tree, then certainly every member of the family should eat black plum. And so the question is, if only the family of the political elites are empowered, how do you expect the neighbor who is suffering to actually believe in the good leadership of that particular political elite who is making sure that he empowers his family at the detriment of 
everybody around. We have forgotten the basic principles that govern the common society of the African people. That principle and philosophy which binds people together, that particular philosophy that gives social coherence, that creates that convivial society where we live for one another, it is lacking today. It has been destroyed. People will call it Ubuntu. Some people will call it Tento. Some people will call it... They have different names for it. But all imply the same thing. Meaning togetherness. When we live and work together, we succeed better than when we work as individuals. But that is the situation in which we have presently in Cameroon and precisely in the southern Cameroons, the northwest and the southwest. We have such a situation where individuals individualism has been actually enthroned at the detriment of the community and at the detriment of a corporate unity that is no more what we have something has happened and so we need to start asking most of our leaders not forgetting like uh, mr Ibako actually mentioned earlier that we need to also tend to our population to ask them to work together. But I want to believe that before we work together, there is need for most of these leaders to turn back and actually apologize in order to begin a new deal. If we have to start afresh, we need to start return, ask this forgiveness, forgiveness to the people, and then we we'll rebuild from there. Okay, uh, Dr. Success and Kumo. Uh, emblematic figures as he is saying uh, people who have that uh, potency uh, to unite and mobilize uh, forces for a common cause uh, in the southwest and northwest uh, regions seemingly uh, lacking how do we uh, build how do we build uh, them up and um, where did we get it all wrong no Leo we, we have a lot of uh, God sent leaders mm -hmm. among us. They are there. We have seen them. We have noticed them. The only problem is that we fight them. You see, Jesus made a statement in Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. That thou that killest the prophet and stone them that are sent unto you. For how long will I gather thy children as the hen gathereth the chickens under its wings? And you would not. From today, thy city shall become desolate until thou shalt say, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You see, there are a lot of God sent leaders among us. We know them, but out of greed and jealousy, envy and wickedness, instead of celebrating and encouraging these leaders that are sent by God to help us, we choose to fight them. You raise the question. Um. To Cameroon is a God sent in that office at this particular time. Now he has proven beyond reasonable doubt. What are you talking about, please? There was the, the, uh, he the... has what that he has what it takes to provide solution at this particular time. Unfortunately, okay. he is highly resisted, highly fought by his own people. It is my humble advice that we should learn to celebrate and grace by God to carry out to help us as a people. If they are lying behind such people, everybody will have their turn. That it is someone's turn today doesn't mean it cannot become your turn tomorrow. What about this Minister of Education? Second Education. She's in the ministry. Now, I realize she's in political enemies, you know. Why can't we celebrate good gifts that God sent our way? Look at what Senator uh, Moki is doing today. Believe me, in no distant time from now, 
he will be resisted and fought by his own colleagues or certain people in, in, in the government. Why? Because we don't like good things. But I want to encourage this individual They stand for the people. They should not be discouraged. They should stand firm for the sake of the people. And the people will also stand for them. We cannot be looking for leaders to come from heaven. We have them in their numbers. We have them in their numbers. All we need is to just recognize them. Not everybody will lead at the same time. Everybody cannot lead at the same time. So if this person is having the microphone to know the position of leadership or the great press today to do one or two things, we should align behind the person. I am of the strong opinion that every of the anglophone elite should collaborate with the prime minister. This man has the vision to take us out of this, this wahala. He has what it takes to take us out of this crisis without so much casualty, we should align behind this man. And there are like-minded government officials like him also, who have the same policy and the same way of oppression like him. We should collaborate with these people and do things on behalf of our people. You see, we are not looking for people who want to be known for themselves. This man is not a noise maker. I'm not here to sound the trumpet of anybody, but because you asked me the question, he's not a noise maker. The peer is not a noise maker. He does not sing his own music. Others sing for him just as I'm singing for him now. I am his fruit dog. As a matter of fact, I am his fruit dog. Yesterday, I was blind. Today, I can see because of this particular PM. Yesterday, I was in the forest. Yesterday, I was a radical. Today, I am a patriot because of the way this particular man spoke to me. Let us give this man the opportunity to put an end to this crisis. Instead of fighting him, competing with him, he did not lobby, to the best of my knowledge, he didn't lobby be to be where he is and it means nothing to him it means nothing to him to resign from that office but for our sake he is still there for the, the sake of the dying yeah, population who needs a messiah like him he is still there so we should collaborate with him instead of fighting him we have a leader we have a moses sent by god god to take us out of bondage we should align behind that Moses. And the fact that we are lying behind the Moses today doesn't mean we cannot have a job tomorrow. So people should stop fighting people in great. We are not aligning behind a leader because he's perfect. We are lining behind a leader because he has what it takes to take us out of the crisis. We are not aligning behind a leader because he is just or holy. We are lining behind a leader because his policies, his ways of oppression, can take us out of the crisis with that casualty and every bomb until we'll be happy with all are looking for. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Success and Kumu. Uh, how do we get this collaboration amongst uh, the leadership in the Southwest and Northwest uh, regions uh, so that, uh, Andre Natemebako, this is for you, so that uh, the, uh, they can have a definite position as to what has to uh, go on within uh, these uh, regions. Come again, please, Mr. Leo. I mean, how do we... Yeah, you wait, you wait. <laughs> How do we... Um, how do they work together? How do we build collaboration? How do we get uh, the leadership in these two regions to have a common sense of direction? That's quite difficult looking at the way things are today in those two regions in particular, particularly and especially in Cameroon as a whole, is very difficult looking at <laughs> the background from where Cameroonians are coming from for, for, for how many decades today that they have been in a particular condition. So it makes collaboration becomes very difficult and as well, unity becomes very difficult, but it is something that we must be able to fight for. It, must, it should be something we must be able to seek for. You see, but uh, one of the things that uh, we have to be honest if we are going to try to understand what is really happening today 
and why many of these elites and funds and chiefs have lost relevance is not really because of the crisis. This has been for, for very few reasons why a lot of these things will wipe away as the years are going back if we are not able to hold very strongly to our culture and our values and our identity all of these things will wipe off away because you realize that uh, there are two major things that uh, Africa has been struggling for so many years ever since it's born again from the 60 by the West and this uh, one of the two major points or three major points you have uh, you have democracy which I call politics the, the Western system of uh, politics in Africa and then you have religion and then thirdly you have education so these are the three things that have been able to destroy the African society that today we are saying that the, the elites and the chiefs are moving into the, 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 the political arena is because they have lost relevance. Being a chief anymore is no longer a title. It's no longer an importance in our, in our society today because democracy and the system of gov uh, governance we are using, politics has made that those offices become irrelevant. And more, or, um, more to say, that we used to remember uh, many years ago in our culture where chiefs funds were very strong individuals where even the state would be afraid of but today is not the case because christianity has challenged many of those deities and many of those powers that those chiefs were using so a lot of those uh, chief priests and uh, native uh, doctors that were living in those days who were very powerful religion today has come to de desecrate all of those things and these were the major challenges we are asking that the where are all of this they don't have relevance anymore because i still use the word christianity has been the call to challenge those offices that many of these chiefs today do no longer find relevant what explains the fact that you go uh, to a native doctor back then in the days where even if a, an elder in the society is appointed, they ask you to go and swear before a deity. And when you swear before that deity, you must keep your vows. It's impossible for you to break that vow. But today, how many leaders do we have who go and swear oath with the Bible? These are the same leaders that we are complaining that they are not meeting the demands of the society. They are kept away from the people. They are not representing the people. But what is the cause of all of these things? It is those things which, those three things which I've mentioned that has entered Africa that has kept these people away. Before in our days, in, in, in our society, in our own way of leadership, we were being, uh, our leaders were being divinely appointed either by a god of a society, a village, or divinely called by God to lead the people. But today it is not anymore, it's not anymore the case. So Mr. Leo, we will need to look into our cultures because those are the things that we are supposed to use in uniting us and uh, we need to look back into our traditions our values the embodiment of our own our own identity and begin to apply the things that are going to work for us because it is clearly uh, 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 it's obvious that with the current system today we have in Cameroon I will not say that uh, the Prime Minister is a messiah because even Moses who took the people out from Egypt did not bring the people into Canaan the people want to enter into a promised land. They don't want deliverance where they are still kept in another bondage. We need, uh, we, we, we need individuals that can rise up among the people who have the spirit of the people, who are able to, 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 to unite the people together and pressurize the government okay. to do what the people are demanding the governments to do. So okay. cooperation at this point, Mr. Liu, is very, very challenging and very difficult, and we must treat it with delicacy and we must treat it with a lot of patience because it is not going to come easily with especially the masses of the people we are expecting from our people who live under abject poverty their priority today is no longer liberty or freedom their priority today is how they can feed today and survive tomorrow so that is the challenging thing where the people you are calling as leaders are people who are living in paradise the people we are you are asking them to demand a solidarity on there are people who live in abject poverty people who live in bushes people who are living in abject stress jurex people who are living in very uncomfortable situations so how do you match these two group of people together it becomes the challenge of the day and that is why i said that it is a flush away entirely of the system which okay. denies its own people and bring in system that can reflect the demands of the society okay uh we are going to take uh, another listen to Sneton bila muki charles uh, from yaounde six of transparency and accountability 
I don't want to get deep into the matter I am trying to address, but the various instruments that can afford checks and balances in this country are certainly going to vindicate the Prime Minister and allow this country enjoy and benefit from the services of a dedicated servant of the land. That is an aspect I wanted to point out, Leonard, and to say that the absence of leadership that I had highlighted is responsible for what is happening because they have been unable to mobilize in the southwest and in the northwest to condemn what is condemnable and to uphold what is relevant to moving Cameroon forward mediocrity, jealousy, and character assassination have taken center stage, center stage, the chase for power, the hunt for political positioning is the order of the day. Let me tell you, Leonard, and this is frank, clear, and absolute in that in life, As the English say, until the lion finds its own historian, the story of the haunt shall and will always glorify the hunter. We have to protect that which belongs to us. Today it is John Gute. Tomorrow it is going to be another person, maybe not from the southwest. It will be, it may be from the Northwest. Let us lend the same support. I saw and I know Prime Minister Chief Joseph Diongute gave to preceding Prime Ministers in this country. He too deserves that. Unfortunately, Like the late Prime Minister Achille Achu said, you scratch my back and scratch your own. Those whom Joseph Dion Gute scratched their backs are not willing to scratch his own back today, but they are rather scratching it with what one scholar said, engine saw. This is the engine saw theorem that is manifesting. And we have to condemn it. We have to decry and say no to the kind of manipulative utterances and publications that we see every day against the person and the office of the Prime Minister. It must stop. Well, I will always subscribe to the management of public affairs with diligence, transparency, and allow the electorate to hold to account those who hold public offices without influence and meddling from people in privileged high places. Let us be one another's keeper and cause this beautiful country called Cameroon to be what God wants it to be so that we can afford to live in an environment where the principles of sharing the national cake that was once baked by all Now, 
reach the mouth of every Cameroonian. God bless you, sir. Okay, that was uh, Sinito Mbila Mukichas coming in from uh, Bermenda to know that they are in session. How they in Yaoundé, sorry. Yes, coming in there from uh, Yaoundé. They are in session in Yaoundé. But uh, Apostle Ambi Valentine, while you followed him, he raised uh, quite a number of issues here as uh, far as um, leadership is concerned. Instead of working, seeking the interests of the people, People are rather engaged in intense Sabotage. battling in Yaoundé for position. You see, he's means the people down there think that uh, they are <laughs> seeking their interest, but they are there looking for their interest. for positioning. Yes, mm -hmm. you know he has laid emphasis a lot. From what I gathered, is the treatment of anglophone elites mm -hmm. against their own. Mm -hmm. The challenge we first of all have is that um, we are seeing that anglophones have been relegated to the background of this nation considering the fact that according to the constitution the second person in command was supposed to be an anglophone but unfortunately it's not like that because after the president the president of the senate the national assembly and then for you have now the prime minister i'm sure the anglophone elite were supposed to have gathered behind the prime minister to lay emphasis and to press motions that this relegated position of prime minister or the cheat of the prime ministerial office should be corrected in the government. Now that the prime ministerial office has been relegated to the fourth position in the country, the prime minister, even though cheated by constitution, needs more support. Needs more support. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering the focus of some of these elites there in Yaoundé. Were they supposed to be agitating for the interests of the entire Anglophones so that an Anglophone Prime Minister should be given the respect he deserves and given the right and authority he deserves or they will be fighting even the reduced position to eliminate the person in question. That is witchcraft in a very maximal proportion. We are talking about witchcraft. It's not those who fly in the night. It's a display of practical witchcraft. We have, first of all, reduce ourselves i have said that i'm still repeating it the francophones will never have the boldness to marginalize us if we did not appear cheap our elites have appeared so cheap in yaoundé and proven to be very desperate to the extent whereby they feel like it's the lenin's philosophy of taking a cock in the people's parliament of russia plucking the hairs out of his body when the cock becomes desperate anything you give they take we have gone to Yaoundé not as negotiators or brokers of a deal. We've gone there as beggars. These people will never treat us with any form of respect because our approach to the dinner table brought us as waiters and servers, not as participants. And I'm very, very sure if the prime minister who happens to be in a position that has already been cheated by the constitution is not yet defended by his own people to be elevated to a point whereby he can be a voice to the entire anglophones what are those people doing in yaoundé i'm sure the battle we're supposed to be having right now in yaoundé is the fact that senators from the english extract parliamentarians and elites ministers in yaoundé were supposed to be pressing motion that the constitution of this country give the prime minister such impetus and effrontery to run this nation in this capacity yet even though cheated by the constitution the people who were supposed to be the ones to ginger and push forth and press us in motion they are the ones instead struggling to drown and swallow him when you appear in front of a dinner table as a waiter or a beggar those who man that table will treat you as trash and I'm very, very convinced that until a new regime of Anglophone elites go to that Yaoundé, with the square shoulders as individuals who have equal rights in this country, we will always be treated as a very base species of human being. I am very, very sure that what is happening to the children down there and the common man is the elites in Yaoundé who went and did not present themselves a poor class. Can you explain that we are fighting a prime minister? The fight should be that the prime minister should be elevated to his due respect and position. Not the one that they are trying to even take him out of the little office that has been given to him. What is this? 
when men scratch your back you are instead stabbing their back when they say scratch your back as come back you are scratching somebody where the person is stabbing your back that's witchcraft if you are given that position of the prime minister tomorrow you will still be irrelevant because the powers that are given to the prime minister have been denied the one that is in office so i'm very very please let us follow what the Mbilamoki is talking in other words we have come here to magnify or praise the prime minister he said it could be somebody from northwest tomorrow it could be somebody from southwest tomorrow the issue is who is that prime minister representing the prime minister is representing a group of people the prime minister is representing a particular extra of people in a country who feels cheated relegated and somehow demeaning the society why don't we press important motions i used to ask that what, what do we sometimes go to this only to do what do we go there to do is that what conscious is? Is that where the president is supposed to be? And then they, he does not even have that, that, that energy to, to stand. Then the little energy he has, it is his own people that is killing them. You see, um, Clifford Pinchton said, it is not amount, it's not the amount of years you have in life. It's the amount of life you put in those years. It's not the amount of years you have in life, but the amount of life you put in those years. You will not be in that office forever. The opportune time given to you right now puts the energy and the amount of life needed to make these years valuable. The prime minister will not be prime minister forever. You are fighting an individual for a position that will last forever. Make that position great. Stop fighting the person. Because if you make the position great, any other person that comes behind him will enjoy the grandeur of that position. It's not the person. So fighting the Ongute does not benefit you in any way because if you kick him out where the office is being elevated, it still reduces you to an ordinary person who has no say or voice in the country. I said here once that structures are stronger than individuals. If that prime ministerial office is a structure, then Anglophones, which is designed for you people, you have to press out for that structure to be elevated and stop fighting the temporal individuals who sit inside that structure. What has caused Europeans to have so much influence in Africa is that the individuals that were here set up structures. Child de Gaulle is dead and gone, but the structures he left behind are still alive, alive and well. They are still alive and well. Let us go for structures. The only structure given to this country that gives us a voice as Anglophones is a prime ministerial office. What we should be doing is to make sure this structure is given the respect it deserves and it is elevated to the rank and echelon that will give an Anglophone the authority to call the shots. Yet, even though such a structure has been relegated to a place of no voice, the little energy in the office, we are using the little energy we are supposed to have used to build up the structure, we are fighting against it. Let us come back home. We cannot be penny wise and pound foolish. Academic soundness is not leadership aptness. Academic prowess is not leadership aptness. There are many people who have not gone to school, but they are very effective leaders because leadership is far beyond the academics milieu. Okay. Reading principles of leadership does not make you a leader. Mm. Let us wake up from slumber, please. Okay. Uh, Senator Mbila Mokichas, in that interview, says that um, Anglophone political leaders have lost their legitimacy. Um, who do they now represent? How do they redeem themselves? Yes, uh, Mr. Liu, if you remember, I lastly said mm. they lost their legitimacy among the people by the fact that they actually went to Yaoundé for themselves, not for the people. So if you ask who are they representing, they are representing themselves. You see, I have a problem with the whole idea of uh, political elites because most of those we call political elites were not chosen by the people of the Northwest and the Southwest. So they are in no way even the elites of the Northwest and Southwest. Using the word elites actually means an individual who is out coming from an area who carries developmental projects to empower that community where it comes from. And so you can't call somebody an elite because he has been appointed into a political office who sits there for his own benefits and not for the benefits of his people. And 
if you ask that question, I will be sincere in saying this without mixing words, Mr. Leo, that these people do represent themselves. They are not there for the Southern Cameroonians. They are there for themselves. And as long as they are for themselves, you do not expect them to solve the problem. I listened to Bella Mokicha as he made a statement during that interview with the, in Yaoundé. He made a strong statement that if we are expecting that this problem in the Northwest and Southwest should be solved through the hand or voice of this same political elite, then it will last forever. Because he himself has realized that most of these guys are sitting in that place for themselves. They don't care. How many people die in the Northwest and Southwest? It's not their problem. They are interested in feeding fat. The question is, how do we work with such a person who has decided to go work for himself and abandon the people? People who have decided to forsake the land and make their own day, their new homes. Such a people are not a people that we in any way should say we want to work with them. I'll be sincere in saying this. They cannot represent the people of the Northwest and Southwest. And as long as they are unable to, 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 to represent them, we only think that if there is going to be salvation, the salvation must emerge from within the people. Okay. The salvation will not come from somewhere else. It will not it come, come from, heaven. from within the people. No, heaven, heaven has already given us salvation, mm. and so it is our responsibility to walk that salvation out. It's not to wait for it. And so we need that elites should rise from within the people, not political elites. Elites, people who actually have the community at heart, people who see that there is need for the people to be represented, people who think that there is need for a negotiation to happen to solve the problem that we are having right now. Not people who go and sit and clap hands and sit over there, feed themselves, talk for themselves and clap hands to the president. No, we need people who can stand up and say, we need to solve this problem. We have been losing people every day, but we have people who are so, in fact, they are so callous, they don't care what is happening. So. I think it's not time for us, Mr. Leo, to keep on debating on issues that we already know. These people are unable to solve the problem and they will never even give a word okay. to bring it to, to the table. Okay. It will never happen. Okay. If uh, we are waiting in from them. Okay. Um, the success and Kumu, the Senator Mbela Mukichas in that interview says the elites have abandoned their people to new comfort zones in Yaoundé and uh, Douala. He himself lives in uh, Boya. He never left uh, Boya. But um, is this a call for those who call themselves leaders to return to their respective communities and commune and engage in local discussions to find a way out of the current impasse? Yes, Senator Mbelamoki is a leader by example. You see, we don't need leaders that we like. We don't need leaders that we want. We need leaders that we need. Leaders who can sacrifice their own convenience to better the lives of their followers. I have once said, and I continue to say, Leo, that if we want this crisis to end, all the anglophone elites who are living in Douala and Yaoundé should relocate back to their hometowns together with their family and, and children. And whenever they are sick, they should be hospitalized in their hometown. If they have to go to school, they should go to government schools in their hometown. If they are children have to go to school, they should go to schools, government schools in their hometown. If their wives want to go out for shopping, they should go to the local market in their hometown. If this is done, Leo, these guys will take these things serious and they will be more effective to help the people. They are living large in Yaoundé and Douala. 
they have moved the members of their families to safer zones. And the other people who do not have members of their families in the government are suffering and groaning, weeping every day. Must everyone have a member of their family who is a member of the, who is a member of the government? So these elected officials who we did not even elect, they were imposed to us. If they want to represent us, they should go back to their hometown. And nobody should walk around with bodyguards. If any of them should walk around with bodyguards in their hometown, then all of us should also walk around with bodyguards. If this is done, there will be solution. Anyone who is desperate for power should never be given the opportunity to be a leader. True leaders are people who are not desperate for power. They are passionate to help the people. They cannot stand the pain, the tears of the people. They can't stand it. They can't stand it. I wonder how a, an elected official will see the blood of innocent children. I wonder how the, an elected official who see people dying every day, people being kidnapped every day, and they go to bed and sleep, full sleep till daybreak. I wonder. So we do not need people who are desperate for power. We need people who are passionate for the people. And we have them. They should live by example, just like you've just, I've just realized today that Senator Belaboki is living in Goya. That is a perfect example. Every other senator should do the same together with the parliamentarians. What? Action. Uh, Alvin Atemebako, the Senator Mbila Moki Charles is also calling on separatist leaders. Okay. Um, what? They should stay there. They are people. Okay. Deal with this crisis. Okay, uh, <laughs> that was a success, um, Kumude. But uh, Senator Mbila Moki Charles is also calling on separatist leaders because we have been talking about um, uh, MPs for so long, senators for so long, and ministers, but he's also calling on them for compromise. Yeah, Senator Mbila Mukichas is calling for on separatist uh, leaders to uh, also compromise their po positions for the sake of the suffering uh, masses uh, in the southwest and uh, northwest. I think that's a balanced statement and that's a balanced uh, analysis uh, Senator Mbila Muki made. You know, and uh, you see, if we are talking of a way forward we will need collaboration from either side. We, it, it's very easy at most, uh, most times where we always like to shift our blames or the general blames on the, the, the society, the population, on the side of the leadership or the government. But we must understand that the people themselves are a leader to themselves. And, uh, and at the, at, at, in most cases and in most scenarios we are seeing change can come from any angle. It mustn't come from the government. So if we are talking of change, we also should be able to look at the other side of the armed separatist fighters, our brothers who are in the diaspora, to also come and join cooperation and, uh, uh, how will I put it, the full support of, uh, of the kind of change that is going to improve. the kind of change that is going to improve the lives of the of their people you see it is quite easy for us to maybe condemn why some people are living in Yaoundé Douala and what are they doing in, in Yaoundé it's very easy to to say that but we all know the, the the realities on ground that it is quite obvious that there are some individuals and there are some elites 
and uh, uh, people from those two regions who are not even leaders, who are not even elites, just common people who cannot live in those two regions because of the socio-political situation. So it is not a crime for people to be in Yaoundé. They are not in Yaoundé because they love to be in Yaoundé. They are not in Yaoundé because they want to go to Yaoundé. When were they going to Yaoundé? Was it not after the crisis? Did we have our elites, our, our, our leaders, or our funds going to Yaoundé? The answer was no. They were all in their respective region, villages, and community. But it is due to the socio-political situation, which we cannot deny. We cannot put try to project one side and then leave the force which is pushing these people to do what they don't want i know a lot of people who are living elsewhere who do not want to and so it's not only the leaders or the elites who are living in yaoundé and Duala. there's mass population of those two regions of northwest and southwest who are not living there and uh, uh, if my brother who is talking i don't know which country or where, wherever he's talking from but if he's talking of if everyone one wants to bring a change to go back to their, 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 their that that is not how that that's not how it's going to work the president of nigeria just went to 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 um, to, to uk for 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 health crisis that was just about two three days ago and he left his own people in a very abject and uh, a critical condition where the doctors in nigeria were crying for poor poor working conditions and non-salary uh, payment. So we have all of this in other parts of the world and every community have their own problem. But what I'm saying here is that people are being pushed to do what they don't want to do. And we understand the system in which we are living in Cameroon, especially when we, we are talking about the government. The government is, a, is an entire system which is absolutely cut away from its masses where the policies, the institutions, the, 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 the decisions, the agreements which are very binding, they themselves do not even believe that in their own heart. They themselves break those and violate those policies which the people are not consulted in the due processes of such decisions and such policies. The people's, the masses' uh, 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 opinions are not, being, are not being required. So we cannot be talking of these people reflecting the, the masses or these people bringing change in their community when to start with these people did not elect them so what are we saying are we saying that are, are we going, we are going to push all the blame on the elites the leaders who are representing so-called in the northwest and south my own answer is no they have a responsibility and a role to play if they are ineffective or, or, or unable to carry out their duty there is another mass uh, 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 population of those two regions who can decide to make a change for themselves in the community in which they are living. So they are not children as if you, 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 have, you have given birth to a child, the child only needs to feed on pregnant. We are dealing here with adults. A Cameroonian today of 30 years or 20 years already an adult. So Cameroonians themselves, I still say, the people we are complaining, Mr. Leo, these are just minority. The majority, what are they doing? What are their own responsibility in what we are discussing? So we cannot take all our problem and put on a few people as if they are uh, without them we are not going to emerge no at the end of the day we have a problem what do we do to resolve this problem we understand that there is no setup right now in cameroon that is going to end this conflict in the northwest and southwest except the the, the population or the people from the northwest and southwest who by themselves are going to find the need to resolve their own problem in collaboration with the leaders who are seeking goodwill for the people. But if we are going to shift all the blame because they have gone to Yaoundé, how many of us are living in different parts of Cameroon? We are not living in Southwest. That we, we don't have nothing to do with the CPD and with any political party, but we cannot live there because of the socio political uh, situation. How many individuals have died there who had nothing to do with the socio political situation, had nothing to do with the government? How many children who do not even know how tomorrow will look like, who have ended their life, how many women have died. So we have had innocent people who have been dying in this crisis, both there and those who visited the area and were caught up in the crisis and died, who did not have anything in this crisis. So we should not be complaining as if the, 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 it is the elites alone that have the problem. No, the common man has been suffering. We are talking here of people. People are suffering in different conditions and different ways. But when it comes to the, leader, the level of the leadership at the government, Mr. Liu, these government or these people do not, I still say, it is just like having a white man, having a black child, calling it his child. You realize that they have no biological attachment and no no, no blood relation and that is the way the our government is when it comes to its population and i still say that 
the problem in Cameroon does not limit in these two regions and it is very important for us to understand we are dealing here with a system just like as the apostle says systems are stronger than individuals so once you are in that system you cannot live the way you want to live you cannot express and do what you need to do for your society and these are the challenges that many of our elites that we say who are in that sector are finding the difficulties but okay. what do we do that is already a system mr leo can i say this lastly please yes but actually about the uh, separatist leaders you speak you have spoken i have very, said that separatist with... leaders we need to seek uh, in solidarity cooperation with what Melamoki is saying it's not going to come from one yeah, side you, 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 you spoken very little about them but so what do you want me to say okay. they have to come mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. as key players to make the changes that the demands of the society are seeking today mm -hmm. it's not only going to come from one side because okay. we have seen many uh, goodwill people have put down certain decisions in place to bring changes we have seen that it has been resisted we are coming right down to schools resumption of schools we have seen how it has been resisted even by the separatist fighters so we need a joint cooperation by cameroonians themselves coming together to build their own nation Good evening, Mr. Leo Frederick from Bermenda. We can't be minimizing the post of the Prime Minister because it's not small to use it intelligently and objectively to cause a positive change in this country. People have used minor posts to achieve bigger political objectives. Power is not given. It is uh, ceased. Okay. Uh, thank you for the message. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening to Prof and other panelists. I don't believe in any elite. Why is... Uh, is Nathan Bilamki still in the Senate House with all the worries he's raising? Why has he not resigned to sympathize with the Anglophones? Okay, Sonny Kwene is writing from Douala. Yes, he has to be there to say the things he says now. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all the panelists. Uh, no electricity in Kumbai. Trust Apostle Ambi and the rest of the panelists are killing it as usual. More grace to the entire Prime uh, team. Good evening to you, Daisy, writing from uh, Kumba. Ashu Abel says that Apostle, Apostle, I love the way you dish it out because Anglophones have been reduced to nothing in Cameroon. We only pray Cameroon change with their mentality. Ashu is writing from Greece. Um, Gupal Ngong uh, writing from Kumba says, Hello to all in the house. They won't allow us to watch in Kumba with light cuts. Can someone please tell us what is really going on with light in Kumba? Esther writing from Yaoundé says, Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to the panelists, uh, Mr. Liu, the leaders can't talk, uh, their hands are tied. Okay, um, Senator Mbila Muki Charles in that interview is saying that a come together of Southwest and Northwest elites is imperative. <clears throat> that one is not even something to preach again. Mm. Everyone that looks at the horizon, we know that coming together of Southwest and Northwest elites is very imperative the truth is um an individual that is in office has power than a crowd that is not in office when we talk about the elites and all those who are in respective offices because they have immunity and there is a certain level of authority they possess that they can influence the society not any tom dick and harry can get up in the street and solve the crisis we are facing in this country that is the reason when the U.S. Congress ruled against Cameroon government. It wasn't the masses. Those who were not in office spoke verbally. But those who had immunity unanimously ruled because their office gave them the privilege to carry out that action. We are insisting on these elites who are both ministers, ministers, delegates, minister delegates, governors, uh, 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 parliamentarians and senators because they have a certain level of authority and the people look up to them as their representative. The masses cannot solve this problem. Let's be sincere. These people who are in the offices occupied in this nation representing us are the ones who have the capacity to call the shot. Behind every leader is at least a thousand persons because they represent communities. And their influence coming together if they take an action you will discover that many people will be pushed to go into action because a leader is influencing their activities. Look, for instance, what has happened in Nigeria. Somebody rose up and said he is the IPOP leader. He's been arrested, and today tens of thousands went to the streets. That's one man influencing 10,000 people because he is in a place of leadership. So we cannot downplay the responsibility and the offices of this elite. It must be addressed. 
if they go into collaboration, look at what happened in Catalonia. Immediately, the Catalonia parliamentarians decamp from the Spanish parliament. There was a reaction immediately. Not the people. Because why? There is a certain level of immunity and authority a leader carries. Do you think that if all the elites, all the parliamentarians and senators that belong to these regions of North and South West had unanimously written to the United Nations or to any of the organizations in the world demanding for a seizure of this crisis would not have, end, would have ended? The reason why international bodies are not paying attention is because they consider the people who are operating as a group of hoodlums who have no right and they are trying to destabilize the, 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 the peace of the nation. But if at all the people were elected representing these individuals where the ones who were agitating there will be an intervention and long so we cannot downplay the office of these elites and their respective positions they occupy in the government the masses can sing the song masses rose up in togo and nothing happened yeah they must remain president so let us not sing the drama of masses because the masses are not even existing there is a certain level of fear that has been injected in the heart of the masses because of the amount of persons who have died so those who are occupying offices are happen to be the last hope and the last confidence that we have as far as the crisis is concerned. They should not sit in your own day, therefore, their hands and begin to dance uh, 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 salsa. It is time for them to rise up, gather themselves, Norwest and Southwest elites, both in the ministerial positions, senatorial, parliamentary offices, and sit down and say, let us unanimously tender a motion and say, if this thing does not come to an end, we cannot go anywhere. You cannot downplay the place. Most of the people have influenced the world are people who were given the opportunity to sit in office. John Paul Magufuli was called the bulldozer when he was the minister of labor. Now that he has entered, he struggled and became president. There were so many dreams he could not do as a commoner. But when he entered into a place of responsibility, that privileged position gave him the authority to influence. So we will keep on blaming the elites because they have the opportunity and they have the legitimacy and the immunity to engage processes that can attract the international community. Yeah. We should not go dancing and playing Rick Maral. Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. They have privileges. So they have it. Should, yeah, so they have. privileges come with uh, responsibilities. Uh, let's, uh, since we are talking about uh, Sinitom Bilamukis, uh, outing uh, let's look at one of his outings that was in 2019 at the senate believe that this deal is rather a poorly drafted piece of legislation wishy washy as some may put it the bill is considered as intended to reignite the much talked about or what is commonly described today as the anglophone problem. Take for instance, my colleagues have pointed to that, section 26, one and two. Considered by the average Northwest China and Southwest China as obnoxious, it truly betrays the very intentions to deny the people of the Northwest and Southwest regions the right to have English as an official working language and the right to practice the common law in their courts, which is what sent lawyers to the streets in 2016 and led to the situation that we are grappling with today. I was in Boya and I saw what happened. We should all be frank, sincere, to say that we are tired of seeing the blood of innocent Cameroonians flow on our streets. It is that same denial of the use of English as a language of instruction and practice of the English system of education in schools in the south, northwest and southwest regions that sent teachers on strike in 2016. Many in our English-speaking region see this bill as a slap on our faces, which will go a long way in enriching the separatist arguments. While I totally subscribe to the need to promote English and French as vectors of bilingualism in Cameroon, I believe that the working languages in the northwest and southwest regions, on the one hand, and the eight other regions, on the other hand, should first be underlined. These are sacrosanct. And should not be tampered with. 
It is already clear, Mr. President, that the agitations are ongoing in the Northwest and Southwest regions against any attempt to force Bill Number 132 slash PGL slash SEN slash 2L down our throats. Let us avoid tensions and stiff resistance, which may cause more trouble in the present socio-political climate that we are facing in this country. What the people of the Northwest and Southwest regions await today most anxiously, Mr. President, Your Excellency, is the content of the special status proposed at the major national dialogue and highlighted by the head of state. If somebody is not disrespectful of the head of state, why, why should you at this time, now, bring this piece of legislation? Why? The head of state had said it. Yeah, uh, that was in 2019. Uh, the Senate, some of the things happened there on, uh, and they go unnoticed. Um, it's this time for those who call themselves elites, like Apostle said, to actually rethink that rule and see how to start redeeming themselves. Wow. Actually, Mr. Liu, you know, while watching uh, the Senator, I was reflecting on uh, for the uh, 2000 and I think 2016 and I saw these lawyers on the streets and I saw teachers joining them and they were all saying the same thing when I listened to the senator he is speaking for his people then he included himself. He said, this is like you forcing this thing down our truth. But you know, with all that said, he knows that he will not change anything. But speaking in that position, like that, is something that every so-called political elite Especially those senators, because those senators are hand-picked individuals who are supposed to represent the regions. And if they are now not representing those regions, I think it is but right that they should rethink their position. If you claim that you are a senator, you were appointed or elected, or I would call it, a senator for the region where you come from, to represent it. I even heard uh, the senator there talking and not representing only the Southwest region. He was representing the entire Anglophone people. That to me is what I think that if you want to remain in that house, you should be doing every day. Because I am saying this, I think that the more you talk on an issue, irrespective of the fact that you have individuals who are hard hardened who do not want to create any change, if you keep on saying the same thing every day it will end up creating an impact which if you stay quiet they will consider you a weakling and so speaking out to me is rather courageous and a solution to an invisible problem that is still to come as long as the people those same senators stay quiet i saw some they were even struggling to clap because one of them spoke and I want to believe all of them had their turns to pass 
But the question is, why is it that most of them are this quiet? Their strategy was, like I said earlier, was to feed their stomachs and is still to feed their stomachs. They don't care about the people. And as long as the people are not in their agenda, the people who rejects them. You see, you don't claim that you have been, you are in your own day for the people, you want the good of the people, and then you are quiet when they are being killed. You are quiet when they are on the streets. You are quiet when some of them are in the bushes. Some of them are refugees in Nigeria. And you claim that you are one of them and you went to represent them. And that is one reason, Mr. Liu, that I will, for, for which I'm going to hail Bela Mokichas. It is not easy to rise up in the den of a lion okay. and um, raise your voice above the voices of the lions. Okay. Uh, so it is necessary, Mr. Liu, okay. that they should rethink their position they should rethink and their... come back and see if we can work together mm. to solve this problem rather than for them to be cut out and eat for themselves mm. over there in Yaoundé. Yeah, uh, I'll end with you. No, no, no. Let's take this one from uh, from Tiku Felix from Boya. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Liu. Now, Mr. Liu, what I actually want to say with regards to this leadership thing is that um, leaders are not actually people who are being voted. Leader, a leader, or leadership is an inborn thing that every human has. And um, the manifestation of leadership is based on the various situations that arise and the need for it to be solved. Now, I want to buy and I want to actually support what Senator Belamuki said with regards to the lack of leadership or that there is, it's evident that there are no actual leaders in the Southwest and Northwest region. It's very clear because the Southwest and Northwest allies who are supposed leaders have been brought so low to beggars who are doing everything they know they can in order to gain position in the government rather than supporting their own or the people that they represent. Now with leadership, Mr. Liu, you see a, a leader just emerge, and the emergence of a leader is based on the situations that arise. You understand? Now, you, you, you can be a leader in a particular situation and not a leader in another situation. And now, another thing I know about leadership is that um, when a situation arises that his leadership ability has to manifest, he feels so uncomfortable and he does not care the outcome. He does not care whether people are afraid because the true leaders don't work based on the support they get from the majority. The true leaders are convinced that when they take the lead in order to solve a problem, they get the, 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 the support of the majority. So the majority move towards a leader and not a leader moving towards the majority. Now let's take the situation with, with somebody like Mancho BBC, I always like to quote. Now there was a road problem in the Northwest region. Mancho BBC was not a, a, a doing his thing with regards to the Anglophone problem. When he started, the Anglophone problem was not there. People have walked that road. Several people, so many people are using the road, businessmen, big government officials. But nobody saw it. But when you are a leader in your own area, you feel restless until you are able to solve that situation. Another leader I want to cite is somebody like uh, 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 Senator Belanoki. Now, they are in the parliament, and most of our allies, they don't even care with what will be the outcome or what is the implication of tying down uh, 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 Honorable Chief Dr. Zon Guti. Now, because they are interested in getting government positions, and getting these government positions in quotes, according to them, 
they are representing the people. That, that, that is not it, Mr. Liu. Leaders, leaders are not people who can be bought easily. Leaders are not people who can flee and leave their people. A leader is like a shepherd who will hide the sheep and face the lion. But the ones we have, like parliamentarians and whoever, who were voted in quotes, are the ones that are sending the, the, the sheep to face the lion while they take refuge behind trees. This is not it. This is not it. In the Northwest and the Southwest region, it is evident that we don't have leaders, but we have people who are just camouflaging and trying to walk their way out, rigging election, trying to buy positions, and then to present themselves as leaders. And when problems arise, Mr. Liu, they run and leave their people. That is it. We don't have it. Because should it be we had leaders, what is happening will not have happened. Should it be we had leaders, if actually our parliamentarians were leaders, Mr. Liu, the parliament, every day we have group of Anglophone parliamentarians who rise up and say foul to this. The Anglophone problem, the crisis for more than how many years, it has not been put on the table for the parliament to discuss it, yet we say we have leaders. The true leaders will be restless and will not find their peace until they say this thing is foul. That is what leadership is all about. A leader is restless until a solution is found that will make his people comfortable, that will give his people peace, and not at a price. He does that selflessly, and he does not do that selfishly. But most of our leaders today, Mr. Leo, greed, or, or, or the people who attempt leaders today, because Okay, uh, thank you, Tiku Felix, coming in there from Boya, Southwest Regional Capital. This one says, Greetings, Mr. Liu. I thank God for the panelists you have uh, with you tonight. As a matter of fact, I am a keen follower of your panel, and your panelists are always wishfully chosen. In the most of them speak the truth without minding where or who it is directed to. But if we do that at our level, we will be killed. No, nobody. <laughs> is going to kill you if you have chance uh, i may invite you to come and talk here andrin atemebaku is there need uh, for uh, other persons to also start looking forward to engaging uh, to politicking or taking up leadership positions because we can't also blame others for not succeeding and not wanting to uh, venture into what we condemn Mr. Liu, the simple facts are clear that w this crisis did not, did not uh, begin with these leaders. Mm -hmm. It began with the masses, let me put it that way. The, ma the same masses that we seem to be ignoring today are the same masses that uh, began this, uh, this, this, this movement, let me put it that way, when the, when the, the teachers and the lawyers were being, uh, were being violated, the masses decided to stand up for their rights. And till today we are still in the same situation whereby the, the conflict is uh, is going on. So we have seen in different countries where the masses have been able to put pressure on the government to change certain policies which are not was were not in the in the favor of the people. In that same Nigeria, we saw not only the iPod, but we saw SARS. It was the population of Nigeria that went out and ended SARS in Nigeria. It was not the administration of Buhari or leaders or senators who were in Nigeria, but it took the Nigerians themselves to regroup and went out and make sure that the government changed that policy and that was how SARS ended in Nigeria. We saw in Mali, there have been almost 71 coups in Africa in 13 African countries. What I'm saying here is that if it is, we, we, we are sounding almost like we are saying that if the, we are, if the United, is, the United Nations must be the one to solve our problem. Let me put it that, that way. Because they are also in the area of responsibility. Where it's almost like we are saying that it is the government that must solve the problem because they are in the area of responsibility. But what is the role of the population? We cannot keep the population away without bringing them into a, a position where they can make a, a practical contribution in bringing solutions to this crisis. And like, the last speaker was just talking about who a leader is. It must not be a one elected, must not be a one appointed. It must be somebody who just rise up among the people, who believe in a vision, who feels that he has been given an assignment 
to take the people into one place to another and before you realize like he said the people are the one who draw themselves to the leader and not the leader the one who draws himself to the people these are the kind of leaders that we don't have and why can we not say that such leaders are still uh, uh, idling around such leaders may still be in the churches such leader may still be in our in our community such leader may still be any individual out there that we may not know we have seen revolutions we have seen conflicts we have seen uprisings led by individuals with masses standing behind behind them and these individuals were not elite so we cannot i still insist that knowing the condition of cameroon we cannot isolate the northwest and southwest as if we do not understand what cameroon is we know that in cameroon there is a system which functions in place that does not permit its people to breed and to 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 have a future in their own country because it is a system which was not built by the cameroonians themselves and that is where the elites that we are depending on the people that we are looking forward to the people that we seem to have put all our responsibility and our focus on to bring the change which befits the people that simply means that the people of the northwest and southwest are going to die because the people are in a system whereby their hands are automatically tied you do not have the space to do what you are called to do you do not have the space to implement what you have studied mm. to change in your own society they yeah. are not given that room so this is the this is the uh, how will i put it the room mm. in which mr Liu, okay. these people have found themselves so we must be able to if solution is not coming there because we have cried for solution from these people if it's not coming there what do we do then Mr. Okay. Liu? we go back to the population okay democracy is lacking in our country mm. All those with the regime have a certain degree of influence from the government. For all to come back to normal, the entire regime has to be dissolved. The so-called elites are for themselves and not their people. A good leader is one whose priority is the well-being of his people. We see the opposite here in uh, West Cameroon. Lionel Ikama writing from Takamanda. Good evening to you, Lionel. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all the panelists. Uh, this is a timely topic about our leaders. I think they are muted by oath and be or belong to one court or secret society. Thanks, Prof. Mark. Uh, your points are great. Enoch Sakwe writing from uh, Douala. Um, Apostle Ambe Valentine Ngwa, we certainly are going to be ending at this uh, juncture. We say thank you for coming and talking to our panelists. Uh... Thank you, Mr. Liu. Thank you, Cameroonians. It's a joy to be here. We have contributed our part. Let God do the rest. Okay. Also to you, Professor Mark. Uh, thank you for coming. It is my pleasure, Mr. Liu. And I want to believe that whatsoever we said was meant to give our own contribution. We are not experts per se. We are just contributing what we believe can help change the situation in which we are facing right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are we celebrating the birthday after this? <laughs> the party after this? Uh, that's serious. That party is going to be announced. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Mr. Kum Leonard, and all the viewers of uh, my media prime. Okay. Good evening. Uh, success, uh, Dr. Success Kumo is there. Thank you for participating. Assuming doctor is uh, gone, we want to thank you all who took time off to follow the program this evening. If you missed it, uh, take another rendezvous for the rebroadcast tomorrow, 1 p.m. on my media prime. We are going to say thank you to the production team. Stay blessed. Bye bye. <laughs>